What up, nerds, and welcome to another cocaine-fueled episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode 470, recorded on Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. Tonight we're talking about the winner of the April poll, which was Maximum Overdrive from 1986. Before we get into the discussion, let me introduce everyone else on the show tonight. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., we got your boy Randizi. What's up? I'm going to scare the hell out of you. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? It's good to hear from you. Good to talk to you. I haven't seen you in just such a long time. I know. You've seen me in the flesh for the past several days. In much, much of the flesh. <laughs> we shared a bed. Whoa. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it was uh, a very... single, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was really more of an ottoman. <laughs> <laughs> we spooned. It was very cold in New Orleans for some mm-hmm. reason. You know. Uh, last but not least, calling in from Seoul, South Korea, we got your boy Soju. What's up, man? Oh, what up? It's your boy Big Rig Stains. Toot toot, baby. <laughs> a toot toot. Oh, that's a toot toot. I'm shocked you didn't go with candy cane. Shocked. <laughs> Candy cane. I'm stains. saving it for our re-recording of it's Joy. It's rust and nail juice. It's gotta rust. happen. <laughs> Hauling another load of joy. Coming your oh, way. Oh yeah. Here we come. Oh yeah. Uh before we get into this wild ass <laughs> movie. Dead air. <laughs> let's go ahead and tackle a little bit of housekeeping real quick there, gentle mangs. Um <laughs> For those of you that support us at our $5 level or above over on our Patreon website, we got a brand new poll, our May poll, currently posted over there. Three movies for you to vote between. Juice, this is your takeover month. What's going on? I'm taking over. This is Korean Creature Comforts, uh, which is going to be three movies that are horror adjacent that we probably wouldn't get a chance to cover on this podcast. Um, and uh, they're big ones, too. They're big Korean films. So we're, uh, we could possibly be talking about Memories of Murder, uh, The Handmaiden, or Burning. Um, so, yeah, those are the three. A good select. Yeah, people are talking about on Slack having a hard choice, but how are those numbers looking so far, Bob? Well, Memories of Murder currently winning with a solid 69% of the vote. Oh, wow, oh. there you go right 69, there. 69, dudes! Second place, The Burning with 23%. Finally, The Handmaiden with 8%. Whoa, that's surprising. Somebody doesn't want Half Star for the Yabos, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what those other two movies are, to be honest with you. I don't know. What really oh, really? Is. Yeah. yeah. No. A lot of I've only time. seen Memories of Murder. Nudite, oh, okay. Nudite and the Handmaiden. So I will say uh, Burning, um, just uh, I guess, okay, I thought these were maybe a little bit bigger. But um, so that has, uh, what's it, Steven Yoon in it, the guy from Walking Dead. Oh, okay. um, mm-hmm. He's in it. And then The Handmaiden is a movie from Pak chan that is about, um, it's a little different because, you know, he's known for like Old Boy and his Vengeance trilogy. But this one is set during the kind of... Um, Japanese occupation of uh, Korea in kind of like is it the the early like uh, the twenties or something? It's so it's like very stylized. Mm-hmm. It's pretty different from his normal stuff, but still very like dark and stuff. So yeah, that's yeah, it's a good one. Cool. Uh, yeah, get your votes in before the end of the month. We'll see what we're talking about this May. Um, interesting shit. We'll see. Memories of Murder yeah. is solid. That's that I have seen that one too. Uh, but the others, I, yeah, that, they were new to me. Mm. So um, thanks for shedding some light, big dog. 
Uh, in other Patreon news, we're dropping mini casts every other Friday. We just dropped one on True Detective Night Country. Uh, Soju and Ray and Deezy were talking about that, and that's like an hour long mini cast. Actually, it's basically just a full review. It's just a cast. Very thorough. It's yeah, just a cast. The, the two like most verbose motherfuckers in the world get together. Yeah, we're gonna in talk. In the world. When Rob's not there to slow us down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's off to the races, motherfucker. You're when lucky I'm, we trimmed it to one. When I'm here, our shows are famously short. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, so check that out. Also, this uh, this coming Friday, April 12th, we're dropping another mini cast. Randizi is reviewing Lisa Frankenstein. Ah, uh, yes. That's a good old mini cast from good old Randu. Good old Get Randy's- excited. Get hyped. It's a year of Randy. Randy's all over those mini cast. I know. It's uh It's a big year for Randy fans. <laughs> Finally. Finally. If yeah, Randy is your favorite host. Very happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> Mom's very happy. Thanks sign, for asking. Sign up now on Patreon <laughs> for all the Randy or only you fans depending handle. on what kind of content you're into. Mm. Spicy. Mm. Let me get them feet pics, dog. Let me get Oh, em. baby, you can't afford them. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so check that out. <laughs> Dropping this Friday over on Patreon. That's all we got for uh, Patreon news. Um, I do want to mention this this Friday the 12th as well. Joe Bob is doing his thing at the last drive-in on Shudder. Uh, this season, he's not doing double features anymore. He's doing one movie every other Friday. So if you want to join the watch party for this Friday, uh, it's going to start at 9 p.m. Eastern, and I imagine it'll wrap up around midnight. So that means I can actually stay up for the whole thing, which is great. It's wonderful. Mm. Yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like a, this movie is supposed to be comfort food themed. I don't know what it's going to be exactly. Um, but yeah, hang out with oh. us this Friday. Um, if you do want to do so, I'll post a link on all of our social media outlets, maybe 10, 15 minutes before showtime and just click that, join in and uh, hang out with us for some Joe Bob action. Hmm. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to plug? Not a damn thing, my man. Nope. I think might be a pretty clean house unless you got anything left the last thing i'll say real quick uh before we move on is uh randizi and i were at the overlook film festival this past weekend we saw a ton of stuff it was a really good time and we're going to be uh recording a wrap-up episode here in the coming days and that should be dropping sometime next week don't know exactly when uh, but keep your eyes and ears peeled for that that's going to go on our main feed uh, so you can check that out gonna be fun and that's it. We're clean. Can, 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 I, can I clean the house? I think so. All right. This house is clean. All right. Let's get into the main event. We're talking maximum overdrive, and we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? <laughs> What's right. the body Bob, count, Bob? I saw you got that box. <laughs> I just have the one lonely Blu-ray. It's so lonely. It's, oh my god! Look at it. But How's it's it shiny. Gonna multiply? It's Look just, at it shine. <laughs> Look at it shine on you, crazy diamond. This put out uh, <laughs> by Vestron Video. Vestron puts Whoa. out uh, not a ton of releases, but they're usually like pretty weird, goofy, goofy titles like this, um, and they're always like super affordable, like brand new. The most you're gonna pay is like maybe fifteen bucks uh, for a Blu-ray, wow. and they put a ton of special features on all of these. They always put out slip covers with brand new art um vestron i'd highly recommend um they put out silent night deadly night uh three four and five last year i am one collection ooh, i am five seconds from dropping that uh <laughs> that bump dropping that physical media bump you ready <laughs> as i continue <laughs> you're really testing my limits here and on i was and like on. i thought you were talking about buying the vestron yeah I, <laughs> no, silent no. night deadly night so i was like man that really <laughs> like, got you randy oh <laughs> you're going for almost for a full minute about physical media three <laughs> four <laughs> and five oh god <laughs> take my money daddy bezos <laughs> now oh, i was god. thinking to myself aren't those garbage <laughs> you I, shut up yes Yes, but also I'm glad that they get to be uh, in, in a <laughs> package. And I'm glad that they package them together, for God's sake. <laughs> they could have easily split those things up and just bled people dry, but it's a good, Dude, good right. sane business decision. It's rad. Anyway, Maximum Overdrive is what we're talking about tonight. From 1986, rated R with a runtime of an hour and 38 minutes. Uh, this was 
based on a short story written by Stephen King just called Trucks. Um, it was included in his first collection of shorts. He also wrote the screenplay for this movie, and this is infamously the first and last movie he has ever directed. Uh, this stars Emilio Estevez, Pat Hingle, Laura Harrington, some other lovely folks. Plot synopsis by the back of the box is as follows. Get ready for the ultimate battle of man versus bloodthirsty machine in this terrifying Stephen King classic. For three horrifying days, the Earth passes through the tail of a mysterious comet. The skies glow in eerie green as humanity waits to see what the fallout will be, but what they imagine is nothing like the nightmare they'll find. The comet's magnetic field causes all the machines on Earth to suddenly come to life and terrorize their human creators in a horrific killing spree. Now it's up to a small group of people trapped in a desolate truck stop to defeat the killer machines or be killed by them. Gentle Mangs. Oh, had, he jumped a ball headed Jesus pal of me. What's with the, the Jesus there was an I know, dude. What's there was with another that? one. I fucking told you that was a Stephen King it thing. Had, I fucking it, told it you. To I was like, is this, that, that was my thought too because I was like, was this a thing in the 80s? I was like, no, this has got to be Stephen King. Yeah. yeah he, That's he wrote, strictly Stephen. So last week we covered Damn. Silver Bullet, if you're unaware, which came out in 1985. Screenplay written by Stephen King based on a short by Stephen King. The only difference is this movie was directed by Stephen King as well. Back to back 1985, 1986 movies. Jesus Christ Palomino. It's just a thing Stephen King likes, I guess. I don't know. I don't get it. I All right. Know. I don't if you want something done right, you ought to do it yourself. You got to do it yourself. There you go. <laughs> in- including the music in that trailer for this movie, by the way, which was written by John Carpenter for Halloween 3. Do it yourself, says Stephen do King. Do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all better off for that. Uh, D-I-Y. <laughs> um, General Mangs, have you seen this movie before, and would you recommend folks check it out? Ray and DZ, kick us off. No, this had long been kind of a, a blind spot for me. I knew it by its reputation, primarily by the reputation of, of it being King's only directorial outing and the stories of, of uh, danger <laughs> behind the scenes and cocaine mostly behind the scenes that's that's the number one word in the word cloud i associate with this movie is cocaine <laughs> so um yeah and i would recommend this movie i don't know if it's a blanket recommend i i hadn't i don't know if i give it some thought i'm sure i could find some real dark spots there but i'll tell you this i enjoyed this movie more than i thought i would it uh made me laugh a lot and like right away uh, we'll get into it a little more but like but this is the kind of thing that i'm that I can actually be there for. I'm fucking silly and big and fun. I don't know. We'll talk about it more in a minute because there's a lot to talk about. But yeah, recommend for me, I think. Okay. Right on. Juice, what about you? Um, Not so much as Randy, which is, it's kind of funny getting a flip from last week uh, because Randy That's what was going to play the about. downer. Yeah. <laughs> But um, but I definitely can echo some of that. I could say like it's it would be like a silly fun watch, but I don't think I necessarily had as much fun with uh, like I did as last week with some of the crazy stuff that we were getting. So um, but kind of in the same vein, maybe just because this one is just about trucks mostly driving around. It doesn't necessarily have the, the kind of spookiness of a werewolf or whatever, but but it does have some silly fun to it so um light very light to recommend uh bob how about you would you recommend people check this out i'm probably closer to you on this one here juice um this movie is super goofy it's it's got uh just weird nonsensical shit that's happening and it'd be a lot of fun to watch with some friends on like a friday night something that you can like sort of joke over the top of but i think like putting this on sitting down and watching it like alone on like a Saturday morning like I did is not the way to do it it goes on a bit too long and it's it's not mm, that great of a movie but um <laughs> if you just kind of know what to expect before you throw it on and you're in the right headspace and stuff I think I, you can definitely have a lot of fun with this it's fucking stupid and silly so recommend it with like some caveats noted for sure that sounds like medium recommend yeah. across the board here that's Good straight chilling. yeah <laughs> All right. Uh, so, we're, oh, we're gonna spoil maximum we're overdrive. Gonna, oh no! <laughs> oh my god! Run I think we already hills. have, haven't we? Yeah. We said that it's all trucks. That's about it. It's all, all trucks. Right. Here comes your warning. Spoiler warning.
Bob, do you have a plot synopsis for this? <laughs> I do indeed. It's relatively short, but uh, bear, with, bear with me for a second. I know, right? So, on June 19th, 19, 1987, Earth passes through the tail of a comet, causing inanimate objects to come to life and wreak havoc. ATMs insult their customers, bridges rise on their own accord, and at the Dixie Boyd truck stop, several employees and patrons are injured and killed by various vicious vehicles. At a nearby Little League game, a driverless road roller flattens a child, but young Deke manages to escape. Newlyweds Connie and Kurt arrive at the Dixie Boy and narrowly escape being killed by a tow truck. They decide staying at the fortified truck stop is safer than being on the open road. The truck stop is encircled by several semis, and they attack some of the people. The truck stop owner, Bubba Hendershot, uses rockets he has stored underneath the depot to fight the trucks. (laughs) The young Deke eventually finds his way to the truck stop as well. Bill and Kurt rescue him. The next day, a bulldozer and a platform truck arrive. Bubba blows up the bulldozer, but the platform truck uses its mounted machine gun to kill multiple people. It then uses its horn to speak in Morse code that young Deke deciphers. It says the humans must pump diesel fuel for all the trucks in exchange for their lives. Bill suggests they escape to a nearby island where no motor vehicles are permitted. Uh, Bill theorizes the comet was just a broom used by aliens to clear the earth of humanity so they can repopulate the planet. During a fueling operation, Bill blows up the platform truck and sneaks everybody out to safety using the sewer system. They are chased to the docks and the survivors narrowly escape to safety. In an epilogue we see two days later, it explains a Russian satellite complete with lasers has destroyed a UFO. Six days after that, Earth is no longer in the comet's tail and the survivors are allegedly still surviving. Roll those big, beautiful credits. <laughs> How's that for a slice of fried gold? It's, yeah. Wow. Um. <laughs> Man, <Cocaine>. what a... Cocaine. <laughs> what a Cocaine. fucking mess. The broom. Ah, oh, I forgot all about that. <laughs> the most that cocaine is like, fueled idea ever. That's... <laughs> I had to. I watched that like that scene like three times. I was like, "What the fuck is he even saying here? <laughs> what is he talking about?" The trucks are brooms, and we're the dust. <laughs> Maximum king. <laughs> well, the thing is, is it, this movie starts off pretty fun, and I really, really wish they had kept that consistent because the. I like the the uh, you know the ATM insults the guy at first. It starts off with some small things like "fuck you," and "you're an asshole," Stephen which King. was funny. Oh, yeah, and, and then but so the one that I like, really was like I was hoping that we would continue on with was the um the soda can killed. Yeah. That ruled, and then the kid getting <laughs> rolled over <laughs> by the steamroll. I was like, okay. King just okay. rolled over a, a minor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a, de- a deleted scene the MPAA made him cut. Apparently, there's a close up of the kid's head exploding underneath. Nice. Oh, yeah, that dude, that's awesome. God. Um, I love so that. Awesome. <laughs> and, and they even keep it going a little bit because, you know, the. Um, the knife kind of cuts that woman or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. then for the most part of the movie, it's just some fucking trucks <laughs> driving <laughs> yeah. around. And I'm like, why did we set it up this way? If we're just going to like completely abandon that, that was kind of a bummer. It sounds like I'm kind of like in a, a closer, a little closer to you guys than maybe I gave off. I was just more surprised that I like this at all. Cause this speaks against some of my interests, which like that can really matter for me, but like, I'm not a big car guy. I don't like, relish in like the the truck stop sort of locale as a place to have a movie or whatever and it's just not it's just not up my alley it's like sand i don't care for sand um, Uh, but the pinball in my cracks and i don't like (laughs) what's that the pinball kill was kind of decent like all the lights going crazy oh yeah Yeah. i liked that but the electrocution effect it was like a very 80s electrocution effect which i don't know in this i guess it's, it's not that bad like it's just yeah, it seems like compared to like the complete bombast that we saw in the other kills up to that point, it was yeah. a little like, OK, well, this is like a, a Ghostbusters effect going on. That's yeah. mine, I guess. I <laughs> well, also, too. But- Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I, I couldn't understand why in the hell all these people 
are desperately trying to get to this truck stop that is clearly being like circled by a death machine. Yeah, death. Yeah, so that, guys, like I can, there. I can punch it. The in. kid, it's I understand. Like, well, why? But, <laughs> yeah, fucking and Connie, like a Yardley Smith. Is it y- Yardley or Yardley? Yardley. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yardley. Yardley. Yeah. She is just like she's given this role of being like just like the the talker, the complainer, the nagging, like, the yeah. nagging. But like she's so funny, and all I hear is Lisa, and it's just it's great. It's uh, I don't know. I really liked seeing her in this. Yeah. Um, uh, sh- quick shouts outs to her boy uh, Warren over at The Simpsons is greater than podcast. The yeah. only reason I know it's pronounced Yardley is because of his podcast. Check it out. There you go. All right. He's a uh, smart man. Also, yep. her husband wants to see her take a piss at a truck stop like that. <laughs> I'm, they're ki- they're kind of he's a red-blooded american know. man bob I, i'm just a, a jesus loving a, 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 a ex-marine <laughs> <laughs> and i gotta see you piss at a truck stop <laughs> ex-marine Dude, that show, God damn. <laughs> God, oh God. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, they're, <laughs> we love they're some an odd couple. You know who the real, like, to me, the real, like, Bill is, is an okay protagonist. He's, like, doing a, a, a it's, it's, Amelia Estevez doing sort of like a, a Repo Man light sort of character where it's, like, kind of punk rock, kind of on the yeah, southern side yeah. or whatever. And, like, just kind of doing his thing and he does fine at that but he's plays it a little straighter than everybody else because he's the leading man or whatever so but for me like the real hero of this is deke the kid i fucking love that kid that kid is he gets this like every time I, they cut to him like getting to the truck stop it was always fun like that was yeah, where we crawling got more through of, the like, sewer the, the soda and, pop yeah. cans and things yeah. like that well like and the, like the the fucking um uh, what is it? The the sprinklers coming on and off and stuff like yeah, just like little cool. silly moments with like uh, things that aren't trucks. So like, yeah, I yeah. tend to agree with you that like like there's a lot of trucks in a circle in this fucking movie. It's like too much. And it's not that long of a movie. I feel like they could have like squeezed in a few more like you know what like electric. What was it? The electric uh, uh, knife carver. Yeah, yeah. Electric yeah, knife carver. Why I cu- I also couldn't understand like. If the the trucks are gonna run out of fuel, make the humans refuel. Why are they just start, why do they keep driving? Like why don't they just start ramming into the building way way sooner than they do? It just really doesn't make sense why they're doing it. Why people are trying to get there? Why people aren't really trying to leave? No, they don't seem I gave terribly up on why. concerned. Actually, like the people. That well, it just there, well, I guess you could say they're they're there so they can keep the people there because while they gain, like while the other trucks come well, I, I, I just kind of see it like <laughs> the logic of this does not make sense period. Well, no. and like i gave up on that yeah. right away like, the ending is about a, God. it's a trail of a comet and it's also like it's uh, then it's ufos and like uh, it would have been so easy matter. to just stick with the comet thing there's no yeah. need for alien talk there's like she said i mean they do the whole yes, thing is. about the comet <laughs> like circling <laughs> And then the way that they brush it off at the end is with some text that says uh-huh. a satellite blew up the aliens. And then it said it implies that it didn't matter any because it's like and then it went through the tail like planned or whatever. It's like, why Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I thought it was just like a happenstance, like a yeah. freak of nature <laughs> thing that doesn't make any sense. Even to like, the, I don't know. Did to the, the aliens to the, make the question, comment? Did, did they make I, I, it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> they're the broom. That's their broom, I guess. So they're out here sweeping our asses. And I don't know, man. Like, if that's the case, why put a timeline on it at all? Like, I yeah. don't know. It's just fucking yeah. weird. Yeah, exactly. Weird. But that's I really thing, yeah. loved the very, like, deeply, deeply 80s decision to to just cast a little shade towards Russia's weather satellites and stuff. It was like... This is no purpose whatsoever yeah. except to just like take the piss out of the Kremlin. <laughs> they they yeah. got lasers okay, cool. up there. Like, can't trust them. And new lasers <laughs> and nuclear capabilities. Yeah. But also, the weather satellite. Yeah, right, the fellas. Weather, yeah. But also, so switching it to the trucks too, it really just not only are they just kind of circling, but it really limits the kills and then also what happens because then the rest of the time, it's just time and time again, even with the final showdown, it's just you have these rocket launchers for some fucking reason and you're just, <laughs> they just blow them up every time. They just shoot the rocket, it blows it up or 
yeah. somebody gets hit by a truck. Like it Dude, really limits what you that. could see. When yeah. Bubba first rolls out with a giant rocket launcher, I did kind of lose my shit. It's just out well, of yeah, yeah, man. It is, and then he's got that whole fucking basement. But yeah, but then it just continues yeah. on because that's maybe halfway through the movie. Um, he also and even Bubba calls everybody Bubba. Does he? I didn't notice. Did you notice? He calls everybody Bubba in the movie. That also feels like a king thing in my mind. (laughs) Like, yeah, it's it's a character effect, you know. Yeah, I I can get behind that. Me too. I'm done. Um, I didn't notice though. I wish I had noticed that. The the thing is, like, this movie has a lot of characters, and uh, like, I feel like, well, first of all, if if Stephen wasn't on so much cocaine, um, (laughs) and if maybe he had taken more of like a a coat, I know this is sort of like pre Cohen brothers heyday or whatever, but like taking a little more like pacing of from a movie like that, like it would be a totally different movie, but I wanted to throttle in the direction of the first 10 minutes. I, uh, my experience watching this, I think was a good beer situation. Not for the reasons you might think, like you mentioned, Rob, this is a probably a great one to joke over with your friends. Like we said about like silver bullet and other movies. I watched this on an airport waiting to load a plane to new Orleans and I had to stifle my laughs. That first fucking scene of the drawbridge made me laugh so fucking hard. This, this fuck, just like a dude's just rolling off of his bike and getting hit with fucking melons. Oh my god! I, I wish that it didn't sound as that. Like I wish it was as funny as it sounds. Or I'm sorry, no. I wish it. it it's it funnier than as, it sounds. Yeah. It is funnier than it sounds. Holy shit! Um. Yeah, speaking's not my first language. It's um, hard speaking. <laughs> what did yeah, you guys? Yeah, yeah. I uh, like. Yeah, I liked the. I liked the drawbridge stuff, and even that. You know, it's like situational, like with the cars. I feel like you could have even had some situations where, also, too, like the gas in the guy's eye. I know the whole. I guess the point later is that they need gas, but you could have one of them like shooting gas and catching some shit on fire or i don't know i mean that one truck comes in but it's just a gun and it's just on a and then it just shoots a bunch of people they have rocket launchers established i assumed at that point that they were out of them but no they come back in a big way later on so yeah whatever i don't know what a like what kind of platform vehicle has a machine gun on it but like zero shields or armor or it's just like completely flat know, with a gun on it. it. What is that? Who knows? I don't know enough about the military to speculate it's on that. Not but. practical at all. <laughs> well, who knows, man? That's not for us to say, Rob. Okay, you know you're right. I thought you loved America. There was, gentlemen. This is democracy manifest. There was a giant miller truck this movie had to have been sponsored by miller because everybody was drinking high life in it the yeah. waitress lady like throws it all over her face there's one of the trucks circling this miller and it's one of the trucks that explodes like they had to have paid for some advertising in this absolutely yeah no question had i mean at least it like makes sense in context like <laughs> i don't know yeah. there's a lot of product placement like that that isn't uh i hope they did get some money for that yeah yeah i'd have made things just the slightest bit safer or more explosive <laughs> probably is more likely dude um were, so what yeah. were the dangers behind the scenes like were they really blowing shit up so, yeah <laughs> i've got a decent amount of trivia on this i can spill some of it okay um let me see there was uh some pretty good quotes that I found. I just got to find them. So, uh, anyway, I can, so one of the, one of the guys, um, actually the, the, uh, the DP on this did get injured behind the scenes. He was, uh, shooting, laying on the ground, I believe. And there was like a piece of wood propping his camera up. And it was during the scene where the kids like riding through the neighborhood and he sees all the corpses laying everywhere. And there's like a, a lawnmower that's, you know, moving by itself. Yeah. Yeah. No. And a, Apparently Stephen King like insisted on having the blades stay on the mowers because it you know looked more real and more dangerous or whatever. And the mower was remote controlled and it like got out of hand and it ended up getting on the piece of wood and it shot shards of wood into the DP's right eye, the DP's eyeball, which is important. Um, and he lost his eye because of it. Holy shit! Oh no! After, this is not the movie you want to have change yeah. your life in the negative way. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> after the no, uh, not. it's at, not going to be for the positive so well no. more more to come maybe it was after the movie huh? i'm sure he'd rather have his eyeball after the movie he sued stephen king for 18 million dollars and they ended up settling out of court so i don't know what he got for it but he got some um, at least yeah i would hope so and one of would the you lose your king. would you give up your eye right now for 18 million dollars oh man no I really, no. uh, really like seeing no, also, no, because I have thirty six million dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I. <laughs> one of the, I mean, my eyeballs are shit, but uh, I also like <laughs> make my living that way, so I kind of need them. As long as seeing. it was my left eyeball, because it's my lazy one. I don't really. I don't make much. my living seeing. So. <laughs> Get rid of the dead weight, Bob. No room for laziness. One of uh, sp- speaking of Stephen King's cocaine use, he in he his book like about horror. I forget what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's that book where he mentions he was so high on cocaine during the production of this movie that he often doesn't remember most of it. And didn't the, they also say that about writing Cujo or something? Not Cujo. I think it was um uh Dr- Dreamcatcher. I think. He doesn't remember uh, something. The, uh, the I thought it was Cujo for some reason. Maybe okay. Cujo too. I don't sense. know. He's got a history here. What one of the gaffers was interviewed uh, about the making of this movie, and he said he never saw Stephen King do any cocaine. He never saw any cocaine on set, but he does go on to say that they would start filming at like you know five six o'clock in the morning. They'd have roll call, and Stephen King would already be drinking beer and come eight thirty nine o'clock. He'd be like ten beers deep. So he was God also damn, really drinking heavily at this time too. Jesus um, Christ. And well, shit. Glad that dude's still alive. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad all of these people are still alive based on that. Um, also, this is a movie literally about fucking moving vehicles. <laughs> like, and it's yeah, it's pretty dangerous. Giant, yeah, yeah giant directing while drunk, vehicles and explosions. Oh, yes. yeah. It, it was great. also rumored on set that uh, George Romero was ghost directing a large portion of the movie while Stephen King was seeking some treatment for his cocaine addiction. Um, mm. I guess there's a lot of people mm. that have noted there's there's uh, certain uh, camera moves and angles and stuff like that, editing choices that were used in other Romero movies. And King has mm. uh, never said that that's true, but he has mentioned that Romero was constantly on set and King would ask him a lot of advice while he was there. So, so yes. There yeah, I it's mean, a confirmation. <laughs> he's a first-time director with a great reputation and like great yeah. director friends it it wouldn't be outside of the realm of possibility that he would be on set for that reason if he was sober too but i yeah. i mean i could understand people believing that rumor i'm not gonna sign up but yeah it doesn't not make sense yeah especially <laughs> if he was so coked out of his mind that he doesn't remember what was happening like yeah he might have needed yeah. some help and george might have just been trying to be a friend you know and like kind of trying to save yeah. his ass a little bit here i could see that keeping the beat Keeping the feet. Or maybe George was just doing rails with him, you know, right there alongside. George. <laughs> right off the glass. Right off those big ass glasses. Yeah. Hell yeah, Steve. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> so, yeah, there's a little bit of uh, uh, behind the scenes information there. It, it's like f- it's funny to think about Stephen King being so off his rocker, but it really fucking sucks that somebody did get injured. Yeah, yeah that makes it really way less suck. funny. Yeah, I know does. that people got like hurt, but I didn't know in any like like meaningful serious way, like way yeah mm. yeah i like i thought it was mostly just like you, I mean, playing it too loose even but he, uh, in also too in some ways to consider that situation in some ways you gotta say that's maybe lucky in some ways too because can you imagine if you're close enough to the wood for the lawnmower blades to be chopping up the wood like you it sounds like you could easily lost some digits or you know gotten you know run over by the moment so i mean you're close enough <laughs> i have a suspicion that maybe that wood was supposed to be the thing that protected him from that oh no <laughs> but they didn't take into account shrapnel that I would be think my it was estimation a, for the camera to rest on it was like some sort of mount or something like that to get the angle no. i believe well i mean Jesus if it's hitting Christ. it then it's got to be sticking out beyond the, the lens so i would yeah, think that yeah. like if they have a board and plank like this so that there's like a safety stop I can That's understand ridiculous. that thinking, but not thought all the way through. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not ideal. So um, there you go. 
there. Uh, what did you guys think about the <laughs> ACDC soundtrack here? Did that do anything for you? Oh, man. I this might be it. controversial. I'm like... I'm not that big on ACDC, man. The, all their songs sound the same. <laughs> I'm not that really... big on ACDC either, but this is like the ideal yeah, scenario I for guess, me to listen to yeah. ACDC. Yeah. I really enjoyed like it was like actually like, you know, good rock music as opposed to like sort of like bog standard stock music or like something, you yeah. know, whatever. Like it's good for this purpose. The problem I have with ACDC more than anything is just like I like what they did or whatever, but like I'm not a big listener. Because they're just like the Walmart band to me now. Like they're just they're I've I can't tell you how many kids under the age of ten I've seen wearing an ACDC shirt, and I'm like I, I don't. There's something weird about this to me. It doesn't seem appropriate that these kids are listening to Hell's Bells and shit. <laughs> um, Hell's, yeah, it just all know. sounds too. Too. Just, Yeah, it's, no, yeah, it was it was fine, maybe like for the beginning, but yeah, to be pretty much every song, I, I don't know. It doesn't matter, I guess. I it liked, didn't ruin anything for me. I liked their like full songs that were included in here, but they also, I believe, did the score. And there's like some oh, really? really weird, like almost like Skinamax guitar like leads happening, like too fucking goofy for the moment. <laughs> I think, or maybe maybe not goofy <laughs> enough. Maybe it's like just goofy enough for me to recognize it. But if it went like a little further, it would have fit better. I don't know. Yeah. Some some of that <laughs> stuff didn't really didn't really work. I was like, what the fuck movie do they think this is? I don't It's not quite there. Uh, I think but they yeah. nailed what movie this is overall. Maybe. <laughs> like, Give me Hell's Bells, though. I'm all about it. That works. <laughs> Rock, flag, and eagle! <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. What There's, else we talk about? I what? did like, you know what, to be fair, I, and again, uh, kind of maybe wishing for a little bit more variation. I did like the design of the Green Goblin truck. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Steve Ditko, for that one or somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, <laughs> but to have that, I mean, you could just have the trucks, you know, um, so at least that's a simple kind of way to give, you know, to spice it up a little bit. And I don't know, maybe you could have had some more i know it's kind of hard to make some other style trucks like that but i feel like you could have had like you could have had like a hot dog mobile for instance you know you could have had the, some the oscar meyer wiener mobile. yeah that you could have had fun. some wacky vehicles wacky or racer something. Stuff. yeah exactly something <laughs> i don't know just but i did appreciate the the style and design and like the attempt to make it stand out because you know it's on the obviously it's the cover and and it's something that when you're going to have a bunch of trucks drive around in a circle for a majority of your movie, you know, that's something to make your movie stand out and give it an iconic kind of piece. And yeah, I think it works. You know, it worked. It worked ultimately. But like th that Green Goblin mask is maybe the reason that I was put off by this movie for as long as I was. Uh, or not the reason, but a reason, because it's just like such blatant theft. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Like. I I, understand, I appreciate what I appreciate that they did something like that. Like it makes sense. It's a it's a yeah. toy truck, whatever. But like, just make it like even color swap it or something. I don't know. Like, it doesn't you know, take much. I would have made it worse. Like they're trying to hide it. Like no, that's not a green goblin. It's, it's a, a red goblin. goblin. Yeah, I mean, they are trying to hide it. They made little like green goblin fucking toys it's the and shit. Cheddar <laughs> goblin. I don't know. Just do like I don't know. If they had done something else, I, I would have been happy. Different face, I would have been happier with it. Different goblin. Yeah. But you know, ultimately, it doesn't. It doesn't matter because this movie's so fucking silly and stupid. Mm -hmm. I want to interrogate the the. Every time I would think about the internal logic, it's just like completely wackadoo bullshit. The yeah. the machines take to like they take over like everything at first, but like it even takes over the fucking gas pump. But later on, they need them to pump gas. So what the fuck? And like, yeah. I don't, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Like, what also is too controlled? that is it, it could battery operated things? Is it yeah, that's the thing. The fact they could control things? a gas pump, but I mean, there are other people driving around in regular cars that are right. not in control. Right. The couple drives like, does that yeah. car just not count? I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, what? Fucking... What it can it take up? Because it takes over simple machines like the the knife that's just got a simple motor in it and is right. plugged into the wall pinball machine, mm -hmm. but not the car the couple's driving <laughs> or just some <laughs> other things. Yeah. 
I do like though that like we were uh, earlier we were saying like why do they keep circling or whatever and to me it's like I don't love that they do that for so long but I kind of love that the machine that the trucks do that like at all I like th- it just seems like they're just mean assholes like they are like specifically petty pieces of shit and like <laughs> they're not just like robot like like yeah. eradicate you know human whatever yeah. But they they just fucking hate your guts like for no fucking reason. It's so good. I want more of that <laughs> feeling of just like just such spiteful little shits. Like I don't know. Like really. Like yeah. Them. Yeah. 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 I think that's the thing is again there's just there was a lot of potential for you know like the coke machine killing the the coach yeah. there's so much potential you know somebody working in a kitchen getting cut up by a knife there's so much right. opportunity for other wackadoo shit to happen that when, just doesn't when the kid was like riding his bike through the neighborhood I kind of love that scene because he's looking left and right and seeing all these dead people next to various items and I think there yeah. were two yeah. people that died like with a Walkman on their heads, like how the fuck yeah. does a Walkman kill you? I think they implied that would have been they cool. him to death uh, with the cord, which is not make sense. That is not the like. No, make it, yeah, what? it would be cool if there was like blood coming from their ears or something. There might have yeah. been actually. Yeah. But there like, was blood on around their neck that I took to be from like the cable, but yeah. like it yeah. been from the ears as possible. It's there was the a, like a hair curler kill with like a woman hanging out of her window. Yeah, you, you, I just want more of that, man. Like, that's too. the thing. Is, like, I, and I want to see stuff, it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see a little bit more of like, yeah, anything in the like in the back, like those guns. They're using fucking guns. Guns have mechanical business in them too. They're not electrical, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. Like that, I don't that, need guns, but I guess it is firing a gun, though. I mean, the trucks. Yeah. I mean, the guns mounted yeah. to a truck, but it doesn't mean that the it's truck just could a spinning control thing. the gun. Yeah. Right? It's not a button you press <laughs> pull on a there. trigger. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what the? I fuck just is thought that? about that. On oh no! Did, like, it's, I, I and the way they consider. beat that thing is so funny. He Bill just goes like, "All right, when I say right, like it's like he's got some big plan, and his plan is just to spin it in a circle and run the fuck away and blow its ass away." I, I, it's so ridiculous. Just also, to the on. final, the final grenade, guy who that's gets what it was, yeah. killed is like robbing this woman with this like huge ass ring. It's so big. The, the whole pl- diamond couldn't could yeah. never like. <laughs> the plan is to go to an isolated island. Like, what are you gonna do with that diamond? Like, what? who knows, man? Oh like, my god! There's it's just, just an excuse to get some shit, one more kill yeah. in there, and it's like. Yeah. I also love how trucks are so like the big ass semi trucks. The whole thing that's scary about them is they're giant and they come after you and uh, more than one person has one sneak up on them. Um, <laughs> that's fucking ridiculous. So as loud. Fuck. <laughs> so well, loud. goddamn Priuses. <laughs> God well, and also. <laughs> Priuses. Priuses. Um. Yeah, but yeah, even the final kill is just another, you know, adios, motherfucker. Truck surprise. And then it's just, another fucking bazooka. Yeah. And like, yeah. I thought they were going to do something special there. And like, that's the Me thing too. is like, this movie starts so strong and it has so much to follow and it does kind of taper. I think yeah. like the, the end, like the chase and everything where they actually escape is like, it's a little more exciting because they're a change of environment only if just for that. Yeah. But man, I, I wish they had done just something a little bit more impactful with the last kill of the green goblin and like i don't know got his ass into the water or something or tricked it into ramping into the water and exploding on the surface or some shit they would have heard well, that because, thing yeah. coming like three miles down the road oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're supposed to be watching for the damn things anyway yeah. <laughs> well and two this is the kind of movie where it's it's tricky because there's not even like info dumps or lore or like building anything out is just completely throwaway. you have like a a morse code scene where they're deciphering that the kid just then, knows it thank god he showed and then up. yeah and then just about like, the badge. aliens and then at the end it's just text to brush it away so there's not even really anything to kind of pad out this time where somebody's not getting run over you know you find out bill uh like is an ex-convict or something and uh his yeah this guy's running being mean to him and like he's doing that to everybody apparently he's making them work longer hours without clocking in and stuff or else like he's gonna call their probation officer but 
no yeah. like human interest in really any of these characters like bill and brick oh. kind of get together oh, but like it seems really like they have no chemistry at all she's they they have sex or they're, or they're about to have sex. i don't know at some point she's like well you fuck like a hero it's like oh my god dude no chemistry everything about the brett character is a oh, huge man. huge miss like, like just like her her what what drives her to be anything or like what what motivates her in any given scene is completely radically altered from like scene to scene mm. she starts off being like completely headstrong and like what like like self-possessed and like doing her own thing like a hard ass with the uh, bible salesman guy um but as soon as that guy's out of the picture and she's there she just starts like fawning over bill and like becomes a damsel uh, at one point or another and like I don't know, man. It's been like, what, two, three days? I understand these people are in a weird situation, but they go from like fearing for their lives to like literally the next scene is just them like, like fucking on a diner table or some shit. <laughs> like, I don't know. It doesn't. I feel like they, she just suddenly turns into they just needed somebody there to be a little well, she has like a moment of trauma it. too but yeah it's like thrown out the window like she's like, oh, his smell is on me. I got to get out of these clothes. Yeah. And- I don't but, know. Yeah. Man. Nothing it's ever just... really gets developed in any kind. And even yeah, there was potential for the kid. Well, the thing was is like the dad dies, but you don't really know anything about him. And so he's like, I gotta go out and get my kid. And then he dies, yeah. and the kid shows up. That dude's uh, just continues to be a huge piece of shit. But yeah, it, nothing ever really feels like he dies so e early. I wish that yeah. like the dad had like 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 died like have he had a little bit more time just said something about his kid again yeah like, or like, actually made it out and was searching for him yeah and like i don't know yeah maybe he died son, that way maybe the kid finds him instead of the preacher in that pit it doesn't gives us less of the yeah. i don't know there's a million ways you can skin that cat but yeah like, i don't know i, I felt look, like he was under salt baked for the kid's foil yeah just yeah look at the uh, uh, this is this movie's not trying to be the mist by any way, but it has so much in common with it, and it just completely lacks any oh, sort yeah. of like three dimensional character or character arc or like interest point. or love point. Or there's just like inside of the Dixie Boy, you really just don't give a shit about what's going on there at all. It's just like a yeah. whole story, basically. Or even that's like for that diner scene in the birds, you know, where people are yeah, totally. have different opinions yeah, about right. what it could be or what they want to do about it. Some people <laughs> want to get out of Dodge. Some people want to. But no, everybody, for some reason, wants to get to the truck stop and then they <laughs> yeah. all want to get out of the truck stop. Yeah. <laughs> but they but they you don't like use this. They use the sewers. Yeah. To, leave, to get the yeah. kid. Yeah. 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 So, so they I mean, know that they, they can close leave. it up sooner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But well, they, they don't. The, the whole the the sewer that the kid comes through is a different one than the one they eventually use, and I don't remember if who is brought that? up the second one. Yeah, because they, it it crumbles like something uh, comes down there and like collapses. Okay, you know, maybe. Right after uh, yeah. Thing. Oh, it hits it. We see the truck is like chasing them, and it like hits. The just tunnel or what? Yeah, yeah. That's, okay, how the, that's right. The and they had to cut the. They had yeah. to like cut off yeah. the grating on the other one. That's so it was true. definitely a different one. Okay, yeah. okay, that's fair. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like I, the thing is, I don't know. There's a million things that you can point to and like say like they, they. This is not great. The only thing this movie needed to do for me to be like thrilled beyond words with it was just to keep up the momentum of the beginning and that it doesn't do entirely. And that's, yeah. that's really the, the, the one true crime I see with this movie is man, if you're going to like it just over promised and under delivered in, in the end of things, I think it still had plenty of moments, but it does feel long. And it's because they just like, I don't like just, I don't know. We've said this already, but like just cram in some more like insane machines being yeah. assholes to people. Like show me that ATM again. Show me like anything. I don't know there's a million fucking electrical things you can play with and they just they kind of stop short and the human interest stuff it's like it almost does kind of feel like a little bit of a trial run for the mist but the only conflict is just between the owner and everyone else because the owner is like a slimy sack of shit yeah like that's it yeah, the bible salesman's there for a minute trying to be a piece of shit oh sell, i forgot about him. yeah he's stuff. skeeving yeah so there's like a little but, he, but not enough not enough no yeah either either do he's, that or like just be funnier do more jokes more crazy lines, yeah just you know. ramp it up they try yeah, to be somber yeah. like not an insignificant amount of this movie and you know like it's okay to like 
just connect those loosely to like bombastic bullshit at a certain yeah. point. I don't usually I like a lot of movies can fail doing that too. So like we understandable, need, but like we need more Jesus Christ Palominas in here as well. Yeah. Can. And I don't know. And more consistent characterization couldn't hurt. Whether it's, you know whether it's dramatic or comedic, just a little bit more like consistency. Even Bill is like kind of all over the map. Sometimes he's like cracking wise about like, well, fuck it, we'll just go fill him up. And like or some like, and sometimes he's like completely deadly somber. It's just Yeah. I don't know. I just don't know what to make of our, our characters really beyond their absolute surface level bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Jo- Joey, the uh, another employee there, is like taking a huge shit while looking at a porn mag. Which just oh, yeah. awful. That, that's truly like, awful. <laughs> that's a real uh that's a real fun kink, I'm sure, but not for me. Just, <laughs> Just like imagining that you're getting a blumpkin, I guess. Is that the Whoa. situation there? Yeah, happening? there is a couple. I mean, bathroom sexual references, which is kind of weird that there's more yeah. than one. Yeah, <laughs> Stephen King might have a kink, and it's a dirty. He's a scat man. Bathroom. Babe. And when he's scat. when he's high on cocaine, it just slips out. He can't keep it contained anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's really the the kink laxative for him. Uh, <laughs> Ah, oh, this cocaine's making me shit, but I'm still just so wound up, babe. Meet me in the can, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Oh, my lord. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't, but... <laughs> Bring a case of Miller. Explain Explain to me what you're saying. <laughs> it's, right. um, it's very step difficult by step. to decide. <laughs> Where are we going with this? Well, here's yes, what's going to happen. That's what a boy like. Oh, my lord. Okay. Mm-hmm. Woof. I don't like that. Yep. No. <laughs> no, we don't like that. Is that, uh, I think we got it, man. I don't know what else there is. Yeah. To really say or, yeah. Trying to shine out this turd. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, there I don't is know, an man. ice cream like, truck for a minute driving around all by itself. Yeah. You know? That's the thing. It's like watching this. I mean, I wasn't totally engaged, but also I guess I kind of appreciate that if you're going to have a movie like that, it's pretty easy to zone out. You know, pretty easy to check my phone and not really miss, miss anything, yeah. anything, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those things where I watched it. There were some fun moments. There were some ideas that I thought like, oh, that's that's fun or clever. But for the most part, I'm just kind of forget most of this movie because most of this movie, like the middle to end just drags its ass and just kind of does the same things again and again. And mm-hmm. so, like, if it's on, it's fine um because there's nothing bad in it necessarily that's happening it's just sometimes it's not silly enough yeah, yeah. it's I've, too thin to be that. anything but silly and it, yeah. it, it doesn't hit that yeah yeah hit that note all the time it's sometimes really does try it, it kind of has chopping mall kind of has a little bit of that problem too like i was yeah. thinking like it felt like that to me where it's like there are just whole swaths of that movie that are very forgettable and yeah. then there's like you some know, memorable his name is getting electrocuted cuted in a puddle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Juice, I don't remember that guy's name often. You were kind of getting getting into the plane landing mode. Why don't you yeah. kick us off out of five? <laughs> how do you feel about maximum overdrive? Yeah, I mean, I think that's how I f- I feel about it. It's like it it caught my attention at the beginning and I was kind of hoping it would be more than it was, but also keeping expectations low because of the way it was presented. Um and like I said, I watched it I was somewhat engaged, but it was easy to kind of like check out and check back in. So, you know, I kind of appreciate that. At least it's not like trying to keep me tethered. Um, and yeah, I mean, some of it's okay. Like the, the design of the truck, um, you know, some of those initial kills were fine. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's okay. That's okay. Um, <laughs> prob- honestly, though, I mean, probably like a 1.5, if I'm being honest. Don't lie. Oh, Don't lie. No. Me. I was th- I was considering like a two switching places with Randy from last week, but when I really, really think about it, the big pauses from this movie definitely come from the first 10 to 15 minutes, and it doesn't even really leave me with a lot at the end, just another kind of bazooka kill. Or explosion kill. Uh, it's the truck. But I mean, you know, and then and then even the final kill is just another 
I'm going to run your ass over. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, 1.5 seems appropriate. Bob, how about you? Out of five, where are you going to put this one? I'm a little warmer on it. Not, not by a ton though. I think I I don't disagree with anything that you've said. Um, It's, it's got some like fun manic energy that it fails to maintain. And when that dips, the characters are not well written enough. And I don't think the actors are like particularly interested enough in their characters to like really pull this thing through uh, the middle of the movie where the action kind of dips and you've just got a bunch of trucks driving around. Um, I do wish that they just had more goofiness um, because this is a fun ride. And I think if you're able to talk over it with your friends and make jokes amongst yourselves to kind of fill in the gaps, this can be a lot of fun. Um, But the movie as it stands in and of itself definitely has a lull. It could be 10 minutes shorter, like easily the music for the most part adds like some energy to it that I, that I dig. Um, yeah, there's a couple goofy lines, a couple cool kills. I wish that we would have seen like more, even more mayhem when that kid was driving through the neighborhood on his bike. And um, it's okay. I don't, I don't necessarily love it. I don't hate it. I'm kind of just like right down the middle on this, I guess. So I'm gonna come in with a two and a half out of five for maximum overdrive. Okay, surprising, a little higher than I thought, but yeah. Randy, right. how do you feel? Um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I was so shocked that I liked this movie as much as I did that it really kind of like, it, it, I don't know, it pushes my score up, I think a little bit just because it was a surprise somehow, you know what I mean? Like I had heard that it was good, but like, you can't always trust that with schlock movies. Your mileage may vary on all that shit. So like this one, I just kind of had an, especially after, and especially after silver bullet last week and knowing the amount of cocaine and shit in this, like. Or like the, the the reputation this movie had is, I guess, more accurate thing to say. Um, I don't know. I was just pleasantly surprised. It left me with definitely more of a positive feeling than a negative one. Although I I agree with all the complaints we've made here for the most part. Like I I, I think that this movie like would have done gangbusters if the melodrama was also played for laughs instead of tried to play straight. I think that if maybe I love, I like Emilio Estevez pretty good and all that stuff. But like, I think if you had somebody that was maybe a little funnier in that role, it could have worked. Mm-hmm. I think if you had a few other like more comedic characters in there that weren't, there were a handful for sure. But like, I don't know the, the if you're going to have the love story in there to sort of like cut down on costs, probably for effects and cause you front loaded all your effects. Yeah. Then that's fine. You can make, you can make it, goofy and silly in other ways like you don't have to just be doing that one trick although that is kind of the trick that this movie is known for and with good reason because it's a lot of fucking fun when it's on banging on all cylinders so i don't know like i i just think that there was it was a miss a, a miss in terms of like all of the characters all of the internal logic all that stuff and if you're gonna be as, as thin in this stuff don't play that stuff as straight just go for goofiness and it's fine you don't have to be airplane goofy but you can have the characters be like, like way overwrought, like embarrassingly overwrought, like like somebody doing a soap opera pastiche or something. You know what I mean? And that would work great. I think that would have like really rounded this movie out and gave those quiet moments a purpose. Um, but you know, that's not what we got. And ultimately, as much as I enjoyed it, it definitely has diminishing returns as the movie goes on. It kind of has a couple more peaks in there, but not much of them. Um, I just wish more than anything there was more like varied and more consistent machines attacking people scenes. Um, I, there's there's just so much so much that can be done when you just throw the rule book out the window and say any machine can attack any person. What do you got? Yeah. Um, so all that said, I think I'm gonna just because I liked it more than I didn't. I'm gonna just edge it out to a two point seven five. It would probably be a 2.5 otherwise. I don't know, like the ethos, the style of this movie, like with the ACDC and like it kind of knows, I think, what it wants to be in the action department. Yeah. At least a lot of it does. It just doesn't maintain that velocity and it also doesn't have anything else really going for it. Well, with Randy's sky high 2.75, that's going to put our aggregate (laughs) at a two and a quarter. 
Let's jump into our Rotten Tomatoes segment and see what the critics and users have to say about Maximum Overdrive. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Rotten Tomatoes segment of the show. In this segment, I'm going to have these gentlemen answer within the best of their abilities what they believe the positive, aggregate positive score is on RottenTomatoes.com from both the critics and users on Maximum Overdrive's page here. Uh, we're going to start, as we always do, with the critics, and there are just 14 reviews here, so not very many. Uh, it's an older movie. I guess that's, that'd be the reason. So um, why don't we start with Juice this week? Juice, we got 14 reviews. Uh, where do you? Th- how many of those reviews do you expect to be positive reviews? Not a lot, Randy. Not a lot. But 14 kind of skews it because yeah, it's not that much. So I'll probably just try to keep it close to the straight chilling crew and say 40. 40%. All right. Bob, how about you? Coming in over, under. Oh, I'm taking the under on this one. <laughs> let me get the 25, okay. please. Whoa. 25%. Now, let me do a little bit of clickety-clackety math here real quick. Okay, somebody is only 11 percentage points away from the glorious correct answer, which is 14%. Oh, well, it was that one person? Out of that. 14%. Ooh, two, That's maybe. not how the math breaks down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know how many that is because I don't know the math either. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, 14 reviews on there and only 14% of those 14 Whoa. are positive. So um, That's a hell skeet right there. It is a hell skeet. Thank you, <laughs> Stephen King. A- I see that you know your judo well. Maximum right. skeet. <laughs> that's a yeah that's a good little bump um, <laughs> <laughs> all right next on our menu here is the audience score and there is a significant spike in number of reviews here Twenty five thousand ratings for this movie so we're in the k's we're going to start in reverse order here and let bob get a, a bite at this first what do you think those twenty five thousand reviews net at bob it'll be higher there's definitely a cult following for this but I don't think it's going to be very high still. I think it's going to be sub 50%, uh, even with a sample size that high. So I'll take a 40. I'll take a 40. You can go with the 40. All right. Juice, where are you coming in at? Yeah, I don't know why I have more faith in this film this week than the person who rated it the lowest. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go slightly higher. I guess I'd take the 45. 45. All right. Well, you guys are very close. Five percentage points off. Oh. Because the correct answer is 50%. Justin's going to split that. There it is. Whoa. You snaked right. it. Yeah. Straight down the middle, him. which yeah. ours was two point two five two five. Hell ski. Yeah. Oh, I thought you, I thought you were launching. It <laughs> Close. <here. Okay>. No. <laughs> two point uh, hell ski. Two. I think that's a uh, two point uh, hell ski. <laughs> <laughs> Just the ramp. All right. Blast off. So yeah. Sorry. Fifty percent even from those 25,000 reviewers. Uh, That's lower than I thought it would be because I just thought this movie's cult reputation was a little bit stronger than that maybe, but... One thing I I did forget to mention in the have you seen this before? I know I ruined the segment, but... um I so I didn't think I'd ever and I never seen this all the way through, but something about the scene where all the trucks are lined up waiting to get in the stop and maybe one of the times they were circling, I kind of felt familiar to me like i had seen it on television or something at some point i don't know when it happened i was just like oh maybe i've seen pieces of this before it just felt more familiar to me than than i realized so that's happened a few times well back when you had cable television and you just flipping channels and you'll watch like 10 minutes of something right in the middle of a movie (laughs) god you're old (laughs) yeah well, maximum terror. The stories <laughs> right. you boys told me from your childhoods. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Living vicariously through our yeah. childhoods. <laughs> yes. You know, Juice, course. I caught the middle 10 minutes of this movie when I was a young lad just surfing. Oh, channels. really? Yeah. Let me how, did you you with the t- how did you do that? I mean, when I watch something, I just. Television. <laughs> I don't. You what's a remote? Into I just your tele- you know touch my computer screen and Justin, <laughs> Justin I have a new Siri and it plays. I just Justin, blink. I just blink two times and, and it. Chooses. Justin, of course, as we all know, uh, his whole personality is based on our childhood. So you know. <laughs> we made you. <laughs> that um, was another pretty funny like breakdown. I love of her. that line. She's I know that was like a famous screen, line. Up, yeah. <laughs> We I, may, you can't do this. the way she screams oh, it mate. and she's just <laughs> is doing this like weird fucking jolty thing i've that is one of oh, the best man. line reads in this movie for sure we um, may too. <laughs> it's just fucking psychotic shit um so i'm looking at the negative reviews here as i usually read a couple of the negative reviews because they're usually funnier um not usually they're sometimes funny uh i can tell you that one two three four five six there's six uh, negative reviews here that have comments, and at least two of them attribute this entire movie to cocaine. So that is a very popular way of thinking Ooh. about this movie. Um, this one says, uh, uh, someone once said to me, Stephen King didn't direct this movie. Cocaine directed this movie, and it certainly shows. <laughs> Damn. And I think that's pretty funny. And then the other one is Stephen King has admitted himself that has admitted himself that he was coked out of his mind during the making of this. Well, Duh! It's great. Really, really good stuff, people. Ah, uh, yes. Um, Critics. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Man, we could be one of them. <laughs> if yeah, only. Yeah, we we if could only. be if we if, if we, we work, aspired and worked. Hard. We put our nose to the grind ho- grindstone and work all, every day for the rest of our lives. We might be able to say, "Well, duh!" In print, one of the chosen um, few. In print. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> put my stolen Wayne's World <laughs> reference in print, baby. No, I don't know. It's no, just fun. I, I don't know. Uh, Maximum Overdrive is a is minimum movie making by no less a celebrity than the oh best selling horror God. writer Stephen King. Here come making his less than auspicious directorial debut. A little straightforward. They had yeah, to work fun. in the minimum. They had to. Maximum Overdrive is speeding into theaters. That's the end of the segment. <laughs> All right. Bob, I think, did you drop your trivia nut already? Or you got some more? I've for got us? some more. There was a lot. Let's get into it. It's totally time for trivia. I dropped one of my trivia nuts, but not the other, Randy. Whoa. Bob. Late no, bloomer. Not the Late other. Late bloomer Bob. Two. They call him. Bob's Randy. cocked and loaded to go again. <laughs> I have so many. <laughs> nuts okay so this, that's a promise this film some good bumps from bob this week this film was <laughs> yeah. the first to be made by embassy pictures after it had been bought by dino de Laurentiis. man what a first feature out the gate look at that way to go buddy you know you gotta think to yourself you know this this is a surefire thing the w- most popular horror writer ever maybe is make doing a directorial debut on my small thing. Like, of course, it's going to make money. Did it make money, Bob? Uh, is that on there? I don't know off the top of my head, but you can Google that while I keep I reading. Thought, no. I'm going to do that. When asked why he hasn't directed a movie since this one, Stephen King responded, just watch Maximum Overdrive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, oh, it did not make money. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't imagine it really would. I was hoping it, I, I don't know. I feel like it's stunt directing stunt, not casting stunt, stunt directing basically. Yeah. I, I just felt like it would have a bigger return than that. But, yeah. I'm oh well. sure it made money like on home video. I got to think it, it raked in some bucks. Yeah. This, that's just, that is just the box office versus budget. So maybe yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it did. It's definitely got its place now. So yeah, obviously people sure. are watching it. Yeah. People saw it probably on HBO and rented it, rented the shit out of it. I'm sure. Uh, printed the shit out of it the shit out of it uh about a year after the movie was released the green goblin truck was taken to silent rick's towing and salvage in wilmington north carolina which is where this movie was shot by the way the jaw lower teeth tongue and tops the ears were gone but what was left was uh, severely burned as well john allison of wilmington north carolina saw saw it there and bought it he sold it to tim shockey of piketon ohio in 1987 he displayed it in his video store 
Uncle Jim's Video Land in Waverly, Ohio, for several <laughs> years until he sold the business. The truck then sat in his backyard for 20 years. In 2011, he moved it into his garage and started restoring it. He spent two years working on the head and now travels across the USA and Canada, taking it to horror cons. So you can see it to this day. She was gorgeous. Still, yeah. Still all right. <laughs> There's worse things that people have like <laughs> done. Oh, yes, yeah. That is yeah. True. Somebody out there is like nursing the eraser head baby right now. So, oh yeah, that's fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know it is. You know like it's it. happening. God. <laughs> Oh, 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 it. oh, too much. Oh, oh, am I being too you real for you? The line, bro. <laughs> Straight from the teat. <laughs> um, in some ways, because of this movie, Evil Dead became a franchise. Uh, Stephen King famously loved what? the original Evil Dead and his very high praise of the film largely credited uh, it with its success. Uh, while he was making this movie, he heard Sam Raimi and uh, the, the other creators on Evil Dead were having trouble making a sequel. King brought this to the attention of producer Dino De Laurentiis, who helped Raimi Hell make yeah. Evil Dead 2 eventually in 1987. Uh, had King not been working with De Laurentiis on this movie, perhaps they never would have got a sequel made. Um, that's excellent. I'm so glad this movie got made. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. That guy's just, eye. Get some positives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, apparently oh, man. King originally wanted to cast Bruce Springsteen in the lead of this movie. Holy shit. I <laughs> definitely would have loved that. I don't know. I, I, I don't, he's not much of an actor. If I, I I've never seen him act, so I can't say, but I probably good enough. Think S- safe to assume good enough for this though. Right. For this. Yeah. That's a thing. There's some things you're good enough to do. <laughs> yeah. I think that, yeah, I think that my, most people on the side of the street would probably be good enough to make an appearance. in this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, good. That would have been fucking enough. fascinating though. <laughs> it would have made more money. I'll tell you that. In Maximum Homer Drive from 1999, Homer Simpson takes over a truck driver's delivery and finds out that his truck is controlled by an onboard computer. It's um, a classic. And we already mentioned Yardley Smith, uh, who was the voice of Lisa Simpson, plays Connie in this movie. So there's, there you go there, the Simpsons connections. I don't, there you I don't go. remember her playing a big part in that short, though. I think that was all Bart and Homer, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. This There's was, also uh, a King of the Hill one where he becomes a truck driver. That's what popped into my mind uh, at oh, first. I don't remember that. They have to back it up down the hill. And I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I do recall something like that. Anyways. It's a good show. Anyway. <laughs> let's <laughs> talk about trucks. King of the Hill for an hour. <laughs> uh, this was nominated for two Golden Raspberry Awards, including Worst Director and worst actor for Emilio Estevez in 1987, both lost to Prince for Under the Cherry Moon. I do not. I've not seen. That. I've seen. That. I don't know about. I that. can tell you this though, un- unpopular opinion. I think, uh, but I do not care for Purple Rain. So <laughs> I haven't seen that either. Uh, uh, purple right. Rain, Purple Rain. Mesh. Although it does have like the if they if the melodrama from that movie, the insane silly <laughs> melodrama, was just siphoned off into this action movie, it would be a perfect comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen King uh, has uh, gone on the record as calling this a moron movie. Damn. <laughs> God damn, dude. So, Steve doesn't mind taking himself down a peg. I respect that. Damn. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that, of course. This is a moron podcast. Anyone <laughs> who listens, it's like, right? damn, it's kind, still kind, kind of, kind of, of yeah. yeah, I don't think it's necessarily point out himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was it? I don't oh, know. I mean, I, maybe I misheard I don't know. It just seems. It sounds like kind of maybe mean. he's shitting on himself, but also on anybody who likes it. So who likes it? Yeah, or yeah. watches it. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I think that most of the people that aren't liking this movie probably like it for similar reasons that I like it, which is that it is so ridiculous. So I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, finally, this is the last bit I have here. Apparently, Stephen King did try to create a positive environment for the crew on set. At one point, he rented out an entire theater to, cr- to screen some classics such as Godzilla and Night of the Living Dead. He also provided free refreshments and personal commentary during each film. He would also participate in golf cart races on the studio lot during downtime. It's like a summer camp <laughs> where you lose. Yeah, it's like a s- that's kind summer of positive, camp. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> Action Park presents Summer Camp. 
Um, Racing golf carts with someone who's high on cocaine and drunk, apparently. And if he was started drinking at, uh, yeah, Could you nine. imagine <laughs> those live hey, commentaries yeah. for Godzilla and Night of Living? They probably wanted him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Dude, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. God, damn. I hope they got free beer out of the deal. All the Miller High Life I'm they could drink. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad. I'm tired of it's it, too. too. Damn bad. That's, that's all we got. Let's jump into our Cooter of the Week. Juice, what is a cooter and why do we hunt them? Oh, cooter's character type and a straight Sean excludes cooter must hit three of these, uh, at least three of these five points to be considered a cooter, but we want the cooter with the most points. The five points of cooterdom are sexual deviance, manipulation, smug arrogance, overall looking to tire, and overall patheticness, boys. I think there's at least one cooter in this movie. Yeah. Maybe, maybe more. Maybe, maybe I mean, more. there's definitely one. I think. Yeah, so I would say the uh, the diner owner or the truck stop owner, the Dixie Boy. Bubba. Yeah, Bubba. Yeah, um, I think he's going to hit enough points. Uh, manipulation. We could start off with. Check. He is uh, making people work longer hours because they're on parole or whatever. Yeah, he's he's blackmailing people into free labor. <laughs> yes um let's see what else uh manipulation smug arrogance oh my god yeah check you know. check yeah um looking at tire what was he wearing probably something ridiculous right I think just like a button-up I mean, shirt i don't think it was, was anything that? too crazy I think it was not like, that he's always got a fat a stogie owner. sticking out of his mouth he does but yeah that's, that could be construed as cool. <laughs> <laughs> could be seen as sucking on a big we old We promote dog. tobacco here at Straight Chillin'. Um, Get Straight uh, Chillin' Stogies at your local yeah. depot now. That no filter. Sex, no problem. <laughs> sexual deviance? I feel like he said there's got to be something inappropriate he said, right? I thought he did too, but I can't. I know, I know he's an asshole to, to Brett. Like, pretty like didn't he say yeah, something to the times. woman that he sleeps with? Not that Baba sleeps with, but like the main one who changes her clothes. That's that's Brett. That's Brett. Yeah. Oh, it's Brett. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Probably. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like he did, but I can't remember it. I think he probably said he at least says something that's like sexist as fuck. I don't know. He if says it's something yeah, nature, inappropriate. Like, yeah. And he's also just like, I don't know, I, this isn't, I don't think these really qualify as, as sexual deviants, but he does like just try the f- as hard as he can to blow up Bill's spot with her. Like, he's like, ah, you yeah. hear about it? He's a crip. That's he, true. He he's a criminal. Yeah. And then just tried to like, like humiliate him in front of her or whatever, which shockingly works. I would just be like, he believe his fucking asshole. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, this guy's been like doing the work, and you're gonna come in here and say, "Well, he's a criminal." Like, who fucking yeah. cares, dude? <laughs> you put in some work. Pathetic. I can't remember his particular. Is he shot with the gun? I think he's shot with the machine gun. Machine gun gets him because he he blows up the like part of the the yeah whatever what the fuck ever that's called the caterpillar. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. Is he gonna hit enough? Can we get him for patheticness on anything? I mean, yeah, generally, he's generally. I look down on him. Yeah, Cooter Light. Yeah, Cooter. What about the um the salesman? salesman. Yeah, Yeah, the Bible salesman. So he's definitely out the asshole. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we got him on that one. Manipulation. Manipulation. Yep. Check. He's trying to pick up hitchhikers to bang them. Yeah. You're sitting to kill Deke if he doesn't help him. The kid, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. He basically, yeah, almost kills Deke trying yeah. to get him yeah, to help him. Drag me out of here! Like, I can't do anything. Like I'm a child. I'm. He's pretty um, damn smug. Nine. He's pretty damn. Smug. Yeah, he is. Maybe he's the highest scooter. He then. starts yeah, cursing okay. at all the I trucks think he is. and shit. He calls them puss bags or something. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> um. So. 
Yeah. Yeah. He like well he I love that like uh, he's he's just like a prototypical character. Like he's he's ev- like, he's just that character that you will see yeah. selling Bibles in any movie of this kind and it works really well. It's it's very silly and like just him doing doing a sales pitch like moments after almost dying and like being stuck in this fucking hellhole situation. He's still trying to sell the goddamn leather bound Bibles and telling people how how it saves your soul and all this. Sh- I don't know. It's, it's wasn't very, he wa- very manipulative. Wasn't he wearing some wacky? Like, wasn't his shirt kind of wacky? I feel like it was kind of, it was I think buttoned. Like I think it was like straw a hat. Kind of straw hat. Like a, li- a wacky, Lyle, Lan- Lyle Landley type of hat. <laughs> yeah, and a wacky, like, pattern shirt or something. I felt something like it was, I thought he was wearing a little wacky. I know he had a suit. I think he was wearing a suit, but it was like a maybe had a it was like a preacher suit, like a like a, a seersucker, and like the buttons were like four buttons down or some shit. <laughs> Let him um, breathe. Now, yeah, he's, he's got like a light, a light blue suit and uh, just kind of a he looks kind of normal, honestly. I don't know if you can see uh, my phone or not, but nothing okay. too crazy. Well, yeah. all right. Well, we got him on four, I think. Oh yeah, I see him. Okay, he does have like a little button up, a yellow, just yellow. Okay. Look, you can wear no, that that's suit his well. tie. That's his tie. Yeah, that's fine. It <laughs> looks fine. Enough, yeah. though. He's high enough. Yeah. He's got it. He's yeah. the cooter. He's got right. it. Yeah. All right. I, part of, of me week. wants. To, part of me wants to put the machines on the list. I was thinking to myself, like the machines in this movie are kind of like the aliens in Mars Attacks. Like they're yeah. just little pricks. Like <laughs> I kind of wish there was just so much more of that. I don't Definitely think has that vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I wish. I don't know, but. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think know how we get could. sexual deviance and yeah. shit. Like, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Man- yeah. well, They're just manipulation. Petty they make people pump their gas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pathetic. Patheticness. They kill I don't know. children. I don't know. This is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this <is strange> well. <laughs> Patheticness. They, that one fucking turret gets bested by being spun in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, there is some personality here because like the ATM, and but yeah, I don't yeah, know. There's, there's no a like one. a look and a tire that you well, can really attribute the, the stolen right. um, uh, Green Goblin face looking attire. Yeah, yeah. I well, yeah, but, but that's more that's like just movie rad. making cooter to yeah. It's cool. I don't know. Hell's bells, like- brother. <laughs> Hell's <laughs> bells. I always say that. <laughs> hey, Hell's bells, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you should. <laughs> well, Jesus yeah, Christ, Palomina. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah, makes that's... about as much sense. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> okay, yeah, the Bible salesman, cooter of the week. We got it. Bible that's, salesman that's, to the top. We got him. Lock him down. Definitely it. So we have all been out of town this past weekend. Uh, Randy and I have seen a lot of shit, actually, because we were at a film festival. But we don't really want to talk about all that just yet. We're going to be, like I said, uh, recording an Overlook Film Festival wrap up. And um, Juice, you were on like a, a proper vacation, and obviously didn't want to stare at the TV too much. So we don't have really anything to do for what we've yeah. been watching this week at the moment. Mm-hmm. So we're going to skip over that. And we also don't have any voicemails this week. So we're not going to be uh, doing a voicemail segment. But if you guys are listening and would like to call in for next week's show, you can hit us up at nine zero four six three eight three two three one and uh drop us a line for next week um do you guys have any prompts you want to throw out for next week's show something mm. political and uh, controversial Uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. have you who you got a Is- israel palestine who you got who you- oh, oh god, god. <laughs> call in <laughs> who you do not call in with that bullshit i will be upset um <laughs> and we will not play it no, we, no, it will we, not get played. Would not at all. No, um, <laughs> God. Uh, there's I'm a bunch of, think of the most controversial bullshit I could think of. Anyway, there's, there's a whole bunch of new movies that have come out here recently. I feel like there was a bit of a yeah. drought, and now know. it's like the, the floodgates are starting. The to floods. Open. Yeah. So, yeah. Do, do you think know. 2024 is already topped 2023? Do you think so? Mm. I'd have to review 2023 to know for sure. I, 2023 had some real winners for yeah, had some bangers so, yeah, yeah but 2024 2024 is off to a solid start and we're 20, only in april yeah i can tell you that the, the top is a little higher this year i think already yeah, that yeah, much yeah. i can t- say yeah. for sure even like that potential woo. Mm-hmm. 
Ooh. Mm-hmm. There might be some good ones. Call in, let us know there what you've be. seen recently. Uh, you know, the first quarter of the year is over. New horror movies or even yeah. just new movies in general. Some new releases that you've seen here lately. Uh, tell us about them. Love them. Hate them. So stuff that we need to check out. Stuff we need to yeah. avoid. Let us know at 904-638-3231. Um, next week we're going to be back with a brand new show as always I think we're going to try and cover Civil War not totally sure if Juice will be able to find that so we might have to pivot Um, so just stick with us and uh, we'll see what we're going to do next week if that doesn't pan out we'll probably do another Patreon pick so we shall see what the future holds Um, but yeah check out Civil War check out some new movies there's plenty of them slam them into your eyeballs enjoy yourself and we will get to watching Get, get get to watching now. <laughs> uh, we'll be back next week for show. Um, until then, as all you mother truckers, please keep chilling. Run, flag, and eagle. <laughs>